Only one. Come on, Sean. Hey, man. Who sang that song? On, Sean. Sean. Who sang that song? 88. What's his name? Ashton Hughes. South San Francisco, Ooh. California, baby. Ashton Hughes. Nazim. Wow. Keep it up, bro. Uh, well, I feel like we can end it there. There's so much good news. I feel inspired. I feel motivated. I feel convicted. Uh, but uh, I am fired up to get into some scriptures here. And it is an honor to preach for the San Francisco Bay Campus Devotional. Let's go! I heard back in the day that uh, Jason wouldn't let anyone preach these, so I feel special. I feel encouraged. Maybe he's he's loosened up the ship a little bit, but I'm still encouraged to serve you guys. Come on, bro. Again. But you guys truly have amazing leaders in the Dimitris. They're uh, an extremely inspiring couple. Uh, I know the uh, Quaku is doing amazing. Sakodias are doing a great job. But uh, Jason was actually the first brother to teach me preaching practicals and I remember I picked him up from Long Beach airport and I was dropping him off at his hotel and I was still learning like how to preach and finding my voice and he told me the the two practicals of the zero to 100 yeah so it's like you bring it down come on you smack him with 100 volume right there uh yeah. and then the ramp up right which is like Jason's like prime technique where he's just Da, 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 and you gotta go and it's just like so inspiring. So come on bro he's like he's like the that's revolution right, right. he's like the Wallace of the kingdom right but uh it's been great times with jason it's been great times in san francisco uh, i definitely have seen some people in this chat that i recognize and uh, i'm glad to see you guys being faithful but my name is Sean. I was born in Oxnard, just a little background. I was baptized in the South region. Uh, God totally knew that I needed help. I was actually in the process of creating my own religion. Uh, Come on. I thought it was Jesus in the flesh. And I was, I was on Amen. my way. Just more destruction. And Mason Federica reached out to me. I became a disciple. Thank God, bro. Totally yeah, inspired bro. to be an evangelist. Very early on, put myself on the ministry. Ricky Challenor, who baptized me, put me in the ministry. Uh, and then I started dating Crystal. That bumped me up like five levels in the kingdom, right? Crystal! I wasn't even a year yet. She's, she, she took a risk right there. Uh, and then I, that's when I became friends with Christian Enos. And then my life just started going on a steady <laughs> There it is. Just started getting very uh, less spiritual. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, then I started leading a house church, and then I started leading a region. That was crazy, uh, leading a region at such a young age. But uh, I learned so much, and then we got the call to go to Guam. I went to Manila under the Chalinors, who now disciple us. So things have been full circle. And uh, it's just been amazing to be in Guam. Just yesterday, we had another baptism. And come on uh and that's only because of all of your guys' special missions thank you so much for everything you've done for guam uh, we wouldn't be able to have what we have today to see the kingdom being built Amen. come on bro well uh we are in quarantine pretty crazy times like I mean, I've, I've never experienced a pandemic. I don't think any of us have experienced a pandemic. It's crazy. Crazy. A lot of things. We've seen, we've seen some, some new chefs in the kingdom. People are just posting their food and learning how to cook and learning how to bake. And That's right, bro. Interest right there, yeah, sure, hoping that sure. their interests see them cooking these three-course meals, right? Yeah, bro. Yeah. Uh, some brothers finally clean their rooms and get around to their chores. Oops, uh, people away. embarking in uh, new hobbies oh, and new professions and new devotionals and studies. So many opportunities. We've seen the push-up challenge going around. Oh, Sean. I haven't seen it from Enos, but that's okay. We've seen the push-up challenge going on all Justin. around the world. I'm next, um, y'all. Come on, bro. It's, it's just cool seeing so many new things come about. Just, I think people are just finding their pocket in in these times and trying to do their best to glorify god and i do think that a lot of people are are improving either themselves uh improving their ministry but regardless no matter how great you do no matter how many push-ups you can do 
no matter how awesome your meals are or how nice your room looks, if you don't have love, it means nothing. Amen. Come on, Sean. Uh, Amen. Being in Guam, I've learned a lot about love. It's a it's an amazing culture, very special culture. It's all about family. All about family out here. People put family before God out here. That's their biggest cost. And it's just that type of vibe. You, you can walk around your neighborhood and people are barbecuing in their port on their porch in their front yard. And they'll just invite you over to grab a bite. They don't even know you. Uh, just very family uh, oriented. It's all about love. And I just realized, like, I was like, that's the best way to build here. Just, just through family, through parties, fiestas is what they call them. Just a bunch of food, uh, great music, great vibes. And, and as I was, as I was saying that to Therese Unselin, I realized I was like, wait, actually that's the best way to build anywhere around the world. And she kind of looked at me like, you're getting it. You're getting it. Uh, just building through love, building through family, building through friendship. And that's what I want to talk about today. It's definitely been a, a, a blast. The ministry has been such a joy. It's still challenging, still can be painful, but it's been a joy. Let's head to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. Come, Come on, bro. Let's go, bro. Preach the way. Preach, bro. Come on, Connor. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. See, this scripture is saying you can be awesome. But if you don't have love, you're not awesome. You're actually nothing. And not only that, but you're actually annoying because you boast about how disciplined you are, how early you wake up, how many people you baptized, how many people you shared with, how many Bible studies you've gotten. But if you don't have love, love everything you're saying is just kind of annoying. That's, that's what it's saying right here. That you can, you can move the ministry, you can possess so much knowledge and know so many scriptures, but if you don't have love, it means nothing. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. Come on, Come on, bro. Come on, bro. I know the San Francisco is becoming a machine, a factory of leaders. And I know that we can be very inclined as aspiring leaders to just be the best we can be and crank, but we got to make sure that we have love in our hearts. Amen. 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 Appreciate bro, that. Awesome. Uh, Preacher, bro. From him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. So, this scripture is literally saying that love is one necessary material to build up God's church. But that doesn't mean like you just got to be like super loving and like gentle and just like free spirited and just like kind. Every part has to do its work. Amen. Amen. Bro. Work involved. You can't leave that out. Amen, brothers. And Amen. So but love is essential. That's how powerful love is. That the church will literally build itself up where there is no, where there is love. But where there is no love, there will be no building. The kingdom will not grow. Love is so essential. And that's what I've really recognized while being here in Guam. John 15, the basis of our text. Let's head there. John 15, verse 5. Come on, bro. Come on, Sean. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, O'Connor. John 15, verse 5. Come on, bro. It says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. Just before this 
Jesus basically laid out that God is the gardener, Jesus is the vine, and we are the branches. So the disciples are being compared to the branches. And just like branches need our son to grow, we need God's son to grow as well. Amen. Come on, bro. Gotta stay close Come on, bro. to the vine. Let's go. But we're, we're the branches. So our only purpose is to produce fruits. We're not there to wow. look good. We're not there to be nice and shiny and green. We're the branches. Like, put some fruit on us, God. Gardener, lift us up. Prune us. Get us ready. We just want to be fruitful. Do whatever you have to do. Do I need more water? Do I need more sun? That's where the gardener comes into play through our prayers, scriptures, discipling. There's so much to talk about in this lesson, but that's not what I'm going to be going into. As the branches, we have one purpose, but two options, to be fruitful or to be burned. Mm. The title of the lesson Uh, is Building or Burning. Come on, bro! As the branches, you have one purpose. Oh, that's spicy. Be fruitful or be burned. Now, people think that you have to be fruitful to not get burned. Maybe you've had a scripture using it like, man, you've got to be fruitful or you're going to go to hell. But that's not necessarily what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying you've got to be a disciple to not go to hell. And if you're a disciple, you're going to be fruitful. So fruitfulness is just a byproduct of being a disciple. If you are a true disciple, you are going to be fruitful. So our fruitfulness does say a lot about our discipleship. It should just be a trait of our discipleship. I got two points. Point number one, do it for the vine. And point number two, TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. Oh, come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, that was awesome. On the beach. For the vine. I ain't gonna do it. Verse seven. Continuing on. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my father's glory that you bear much fruit, proving yourselves to be my disciples. As the father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. So Jesus in this passage expects us to be fruitful and wants us to be joyful. We have to remain joyful as disciples. Because where there is no joy, we're not doing it right. Jesus expects us to be fruitful, but he wants us to be joyful. Building up the kingdom should be a blast. It should be so much fun making disciples. Come on, bro. Discipleship should be fun. And he told us these things so that we would have joy in living them out. And it has been a blast in Guam. Uh, we, we've gone on hikes, we go to the beach, uh, we just do, we have a lot of fellowship times, uh, obviously with the quarantine, we've had to switch up the dynamic a little bit, but we've just made sure that every event, every fun thing that we've done, we bring someone studying the Bible. Or if we don't have anyone studying the Bible, we share our faith while we're there. We have fun, but we also make sure that we, sh- make sure that we share our faith. Come on, bro. You can have fun as a disciple. Amen. Amen, bro. Come on, bro. Jesus says if we remain in him. And to remain in him, we must keep his commands. And he says, this is my command. Love each other. 
See, where there is love, there will be fruit. The church builds itself up in love. You cannot build the kingdom without building friendships. There's so much room for joy in building solid friendships. And that's what I really want to talk about. There's so much to talk about in John 15, but I just want to talk about building friendships, building the kingdom through building friendships. And Jesus lays out the perfect example of a friendship through verse 13 and 16. Number one, in verse 13, to lay down one's life for one's friend. True love, number one, is sacrificial. Their needs have to come before your own. So when you're making new friends, when you're trying to bring people to Jesus, you have to be a real friend to them. Come on, bro. Come on, Sean. Friendship requires sacrifice. It may cost some money. It may cost some time. It may cost you some sleep. It may cost you some hunger but their needs have to come before your own. Their time is more important than your time. When they respond to you, you respond. When they hit you up, you hit them back. You're always thinking about them. Uh, You're always looking out for their needs. A true friend is a sacrificial friend. Number two, friendship is demonstrated in obedience to Christ. Verse 14, you are my friends if you do what I command. How how can you be a friend to anyone else on earth if you can't even be a friend to Jesus by obeying his commands? Come on, bro. We got to make sure that the relationships that we're building are based on the Bible. Number three, real friends always communicate the truth. Verse 15, he says, I call you friends because everything that God told me, I told you. And so if we're going to be real friends to people, we got to tell them the truth. And it might hurt. They may not want to hear it. But if we're going to be a real friend, we have to tell them the truth. And how do we tell them the truth? Through the scriptures. Whatever God has told us, we got to tell them. We got to be real with them. Hey, smoking is not, that's not godly. Drinking immorality, sin, lying, deceiving. When I was studying the Bible, Mason told me one time, hey man, you're late and you're high. Don't waste my time. Don't waste my time. I don't want to waste your time. I was like, dude. All right. <laughs> that's the last time that's ever happening. But he, he told it how it is. He didn't oh, come on, bro. For me. And to be a real friend, you got you to gotta tell people the truth. You can't be afraid of confrontation and you can't love the person more than you love their relationship with God. You have to tell them how it is. You've got to be honest with them. That's a real friend. And the best way is to get them in some Bible studies. Amen. If you want to be a real friend, get them in a Bible. Come on, bro. Number four, number four, verse 16. He says, you didn't choose me. I chose you. So number four, a real friend takes initiative. We can't wait for them to call us. We can't wait for them to text us. They got to be on our hearts. We got to choose them. We got to text them. We got to call them. We got to go out of our way to reach out to them. They may not know what love is. They may not know what friendship is, but we do in Jesus. And so as we show them our love for them, they're going to notice something different. They're going to be inspired. They're going to be like, man, I don't... I've never, I mean, don't you hear that all the time when people come into the kingdom? Like, I've never, ever seen a family like this. Yeah. Man, so amazing. Everybody loves each other. Everybody's so loving and so friendly. Yeah. That's because we follow Jesus. Come Number on, five. bro. Last oh one. Number five, verse 16. He says, I chose you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Friends make an impact on your life. I mean, aren't those the friends that we have in our life now? Those friends that have made an impact? I mean, the kingdom is full of thousands of disciples, but really, like, we might have, like, five, maybe ten, like, really solid close friends. And why are we really close to them? Because they've made an impact on our life. Yeah. Come on, bro. They've helped us. They were there uh, to get open to. They've heard our nasty, ugly sin. 
they've strengthened us, they've supported us, they've, they've transformed our life in a way. And if we're going to be friends to people, we have to make an impact on their life. Come on, bro. You gotta go above and beyond for the people that we're studying with. You gotta go above and beyond for these people that need to study the Bible. There might be, there might be people, there might be contacts in your number that are, are, are almost ready to study the Bible, but they just need to see a little bit more love from you. They need, to be, they need to see that you are genuine in wanting to build a friendship and a relationship and not that you just want to baptize them for your own glory. Come on, bro. Come on, Sean. Then what? Let's go to Luke chapter 10, verse 25. Bridge, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Oh. Let's go, Sean. Luke 10, verse 25. Come on, Santa Cruz. Come on, Santa Cruz. Let's go, JP. Yeah. Luke 10, verse 25. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law? He replied, how do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes and beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him pass by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Here is a, a, a prime example of someone being a true friend to someone who is dead. Wow. So many people just stepped over his dead body. Are we going to be those people that follow in line with those that are walking over dead bodies? Passing people that are hurting inside, dying inside, depressed, anxious, insecure, brokenhearted, low spirits. We have to be those friends that take pity on these people that are hurting deep down inside and come to them and meet them where they're at. This is how we receive eternal life loving others it is unloving to share to not share your faith it is unloving to not set up a bible study with them it is unloving to not be a true friend of these people this is where eternal life comes from are you building or are you burning come, come on, on bro come on bro we have to be the ones that stop our plans our journey our needs to help the lifeless and what does he do? He, he takes pity on him. And then he bandages his wounds and pours on oil and wine. He bandages his wounds. Right? He gets him in a Bible study right there. Shares some scriptures with him. Lifts his spirit. Heals his wounds. Strengthens him. Lifts him up. Come on, bro. And then pours on oil on the wounds representing the Holy Spirit right there, amen? amen. But not only Aww. that, he puts him on his own donkey. Now, I don't know how big his donkey was, but maybe he had to walk alongside the donkey. He gave up his own comfort oh. for the salvation of this man. Wow. Come on, bro. Oh. And we got to follow suit in giving up our own comfort for the souls that are lost and are dying. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Give up our seat on the donkey for, the, for those people that are studying the Bible, amen? Come on, bro. That means we may need to walk a little more. 
We, yeah. may need, we, may, we may need to drive a little longer. Yeah. We may need to stay up a little later, pray a little longer, read a little more for the sake wow. of our friends, our new friends, amen. Come on, O'Connor. But, but it doesn't end there. He takes him to an inn, the church, to make sure that he's getting taken care of, but he says, I will return and I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. He follows up with his progress. I think this is where disciples fall short the biggest in following up and holding our brothers and sisters accountable. He follows up on his progress and he says, hey, whatever you spend, I'm willing to come and spend. So I'm going to share during Devo at the end. He gives up more of his money. That, that's a sacrificial love. That's a true friend. Hey, whatever the cost, I just want to make sure this person is saved. And I'm willing to spend however much money, however much time or energy to save my friends. Come on, bro. I mean, this guy was, was on. on his way home. This guy, this guy was, was on his way home from Jerusalem. Probably was so excited to see his family, but totally stopped his life stopped his plans, his needs, his priority became this man who was wounded and hurt. What I'm trying to say is we need to build with real friendship and genuine love. Our focus cannot be on the results. Our focus cannot be on baptisms. Come on, John. But what happens when you put your joy in results, in baptisms? I mean, it's important to make sure we're checking up on our joy because Jesus says, hey, I expect you to be fruitful, but I want you to be joyful. And what happens when you root your joy in results or baptisms, you get discouraged. It's, it's foolish to put your joy in something that you are out of control of. We do not control people's hearts or decisions to get baptized. So when they make it all the way to the cross and then they say, I don't want to do this anymore, we become depressed. And then we don't share our faith and we, we get down and we're like, oh, so close. I work so hard. Is your joy in the baptism or the process? Come on, bro. Our joy has to be on something that we actually uh -oh. have control of. And that's our own work ethic. We, we do not control people's decisions to study the Bible to come to church, or to get baptized. Therefore, you are a fool if you put your joy in those things. You're just, you're, you're setting yourself up for failure. Come Expectations on. lead to disappointment. But you can't expect yourself to be a disciple. You are in control of yourself of being a disciple. You oh. are in control of having amazing quiet times, getting close to the vine. You are in control of having amazing prayers. Right. You are in control of sharing your faith with someone every day. You are in control of praying with your, friend, your new friends. You are in control of strengthening and discipling your brothers and sisters. That's where you should put your joy in. That's going to make you feel a little better knowing you are making progress. You are putting work in the process. Man. And God is going to reward your heart because you are truly loving people. Come on, bro. Come on. Bro. Come on. Come on converted by Mason Federica, it was not only about Bible studies. I mean, to be honest, I was so far from being a Christian. If, if it was just about Bible studies, I wouldn't be here in Guam. That's, that's just honest. It was not just about Bible studies. I was, I was in college and I was going to college for audio engineering. And there would be times where I was busy working on a, a music project and I had an artist in the studio and I was recording him and Mason just asked, like, can I just join you in the studio? I was like, dude, yeah, of course. And Mason just joined me in the studio. I had an artist in the booth and I was just on the, on the board and I was mixing and mastering and I had my essential oils. I, I, I like to set up the vibe for the artist. I had the Himalayan salt lamp up. Mason was probably like, dude, this guy is, has lost his marbles, but I'm gonna be a friend. He may not have liked what I was doing, but he liked it so that he could relate and so that I can relate to him. 
it wasn't just about Bible studies. He, he became a true friend. We were hanging out outside the Bible studies, grabbing food every here and there, just talking about life, talking about my past. It wasn't just about Bible studies. And, and we became so close that even before I got baptized, I got dumped when I wasn't even really in the relationship. It was just this long-term relationship and I was all like head over heels. But I'm glad to be married to an amazing woman of God now. Amen. Amen. Oh. I remember when, when I, I finally like just got stood up and I, I didn't have, because my dad passed away, the only person I felt comfortable calling was Mason Federica. And I remember just calling him on the verge of tears, just, just feeling like this was my only friend. And I was just like on the verge of tears, like, you know what, I'm done. I'm done with this world. I'm done with this life. I, I just want to do whatever I can to be a disciple. And, and of course he was like super kind, like gentle and kind hearted. but on the back, he was probably like, like, come on, God, like you answered my right, come on, bro. Tears, right? Humbled him out a little bit, but that was that, that, that moment meant so much for me because I felt like I trusted Mason. I felt like he became a genuine and real friend. friend. Come on, bro. My challenge for, for all of us is ask yourself, who are you helping? Who are you loving? I mean, we got, we got, 90, we got 100 plus people in here. If each of us just had one friend, one person, that they were helping, that they were loving, that they were treating like the good Samaritan. There'd be a lot of momentum. Just one person, who are you focusing on? Who are you praying for every single day? And just some practicals for you. We may not be able to meet up with them, but you can call them just 15 minutes in their day. How's your day going? Oh, bro. I mean, for some of you, they might be impressed. They might, they might be shocked, like, I, I can't study the Bible today. No, 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 I just wanna see how your day's going. I just, just wanna see, you know. How's life, man? You, you sure you don't want to study the Bible? Yeah, yeah. I just, I just genuinely want to check up on you. Just want to see, you know, how's your day going? And you'd be surprised. People, like, people don't have anyone calling them. People don't have any real friends in their life. And when you become that friend, you're going to make an impact on their life. And they're going to trust you and they're going to love you. And soon enough, they're going to start calling you. Hey, man. Just want to let you know I'm having a good day. Hey, so when we get back, when we can, when can we get back in the Bible studies? Um, you may not be able to meet up with them, but just a phone call. Like, what are you doing every single day for each of these people? Uh, maybe, maybe you know. Hey, I just want to know what I can pray for for you. Like, that's that's for some reason people in, in the in the in the world like feel like when a minister or a real Christian praying for them, they feel like your answer, your prayers are going to be answered. They're like. You can pray for me. Um, I mean, yeah, you, you could pray for this, this. I really appreciate it. Like as if like those prayers are really going to come true. Amen. And, and you may be praying for just their safety, their encouragement, their family. But, but man, it means a lot when you just say, hey, man, I just pray for you this morning. Pray for you and your family. Pray for your mom who's in the hospital. Hey, I just want to check up on your mom. Like just, just get to know these people. Be a real friend. Don't just make it about Bible studies and baptisms. Come on, Sean. You, know that you are a disciple by the love that you show them, not by the knowledge you have in the Bible, not by how good you look, not by how many scriptures you can name off the dome, not by how you can do your Bible studies without looking at the first principles app, amen? People are going to know that you are something different, that you truly follow Jesus, not like the rest of the Christians, when you show them real love. Go, oh, Sean. Who are you loving? Write it down. Write down their names. And if you don't have any names, go get one. Go get one. Go to the grocery store. Find someone. We're, we're, we still have essentials that we can go out and do. Love someone. Every single day, every time we go out, we're passing by dead bodies. It's just up to you to choose which one you're going to stop at. Lift up, put on your donkey, and take them to the inn and make sure they get saved. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Point number two, TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. I mean, the app is named what it does. It's just a big waste of time.
Hey, man, bro. Well, we our time. Take care, bro. bro. Hey, bro. Uh, That's all of us. Yeah. I never I used it. People try and justify, like, oh, no, I've learned, like, some great recipes or some great workouts. Like, come on, dude. Like, maybe five minutes out of the 60 minutes, you find something actually valuable. But I want to head and close out with Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. I mean, it's not just TikTok, hey, man. It could be Facebook, Instagram, video games, Netflix. That's uh, right, bro. And none of those are like, essentially like, I don't have a, a problem with those, but it becomes a problem when it becomes before your priorities or you start getting irresponsible with your responsibilities. If you cranked out your day, you share with a bunch of people, you prayed with people in your ministry, you prayed with the people you're studying with, you got some Bible studies, cool. Kick your feet up, hang out. You had a good day. Galatians chapter five, verse 13. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. Amen, San Francisco Bay. Come on, bro. Amen. Amen. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. Come on, bro. Come on. See, we're not freed to be slaves to our flesh again. That's not why we were freed. That's not why Jesus died. We got to do it for the vine, amen? Come on, bro. But we also have to make sure that even in all this free time that we've gained right now, that we don't indulge in the flesh. And I'm preaching to the choir here. It's very tempting with all this extra free time, uh, all the downtime from no driving to devos. There's a lot of extra time. Some people are working at home. We have to be careful that we're not indulging in the flesh, but that we're continuing to serve one another humbly in love. That's, that means that we're, we're laying our lives down for one another. Now is the time to get closer to the vine. Now is the time to also make sure that we're serving one another. So being a friend to those in the world, and point number two, being a friend to those in the kingdom. A really bad tendency is that we get in studies with people and we're so fired up and, 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 they're, and, and genuinely we we want to like really change their lives. And of course we want them to have a great relationship with Jesus, but then we, we, we can have a tendency to go to the next person and, and just, and, and everyone's just like going around, going around. And we just got to make sure that we're building friendships that last. And it's in, and it's, it's during these times that we got to stay closer to one another. It's during these times that we got to, you know, I, I appreciate seeing um, those guys studying the Bible in the room with all those men in the lion's den right there. Like, that's the group that just got to stick close to each other. It's during these times that Satan will truly creep into our hearts and cause us to sin. It's during these times that we're, we're, we're getting distant from each other even more. We've got to be closer with one another. So serving one another, calling people in your ministry, calling people in your Bible talk, praying with other people in your Bible talk. There's so much free time. Like, just like make sure before you chill that you've done something for the lost and you've done something for your ministry. Come on, bro. Discipling one another, strengthening one another, sharpening one another. It's so great when I, you know, just, just having other brothers to bounce ideas off of and pray with one another, confess sins to one another, inspire one another. Wow, you do that for your client time? I'm going to start doing that. That might help me start doing that right? Like all these different ideas. I'm still waiting for Enos to call me and strengthen me and sharpen me up right now. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Man. 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 oh he does that to me. I love those guys. Um, but we just got to make sure that we're, we're more focused, that, that we're not more focused on being fruitful than being a friend. We just got to make sure that we're being friends to these people. Come on, Sean. And Jesus laid it out. And, and during this coronavirus, it's, it's very limited fellowship. And, and our, what we've been building is totally being tested by fire. Yeah. Convictions are starting to be revealed. Commitment is starting to be tested. Some people, you know, it's just very challenging times.
times. And what we've built is truly being exposed on a personal level. Cause it's really easy when you show up to a Devo with 50, 80 plus people and everyone's fired up and having fun. But when you're at home and you got to tune into a zoom meeting, you know, it's challenging. And so people's personal relationship with God are truly being tested, but it's being a true friend to one another and being a true friend to those who are studying the Bible. And for those who are studying the Bible for all your friends and family to also invite them into some scriptures to truly help them because without God, your life is being destroyed. Amen. Come on. It's, it's, for a while, the, the coronavirus started to ease off a little bit in Guam, but sadly, some military airmen totally went against protocol and jumped around the island, not knowing they were uh, positive for COVID-19. And so we had one service, just one service. And that following week, uh, a brother started to feel symptoms. So I just said, it was that Sunday morning. I said, we're shutting down service. We're going to switch to Zoom really fast. We are not meeting up. And sure enough, six brothers ended up testing positive for coronavirus. Wow. Um, they were in a hotel for two to three weeks in quarantine, away from the body. And uh, excitingly, I got one of them, uh, a man that I'm raising up and training, Ronald Ortiz. He's a beast, five-talent guy, wants to be an evangelist, wants to lead churches. Please get to know him. Uh, wow. He finally got out of the motel. Come on, Ronald. But it was during those times that I had to be a real friend to them. And so I took it upon myself to call them two times a day and have a D group with them every single day and a prayer every single night just to make sure they were, they were okay on their purity, okay on their symptoms, okay on their, their health, their food, and just making sure that I took care of them. And it was during that time that we got close together. It was fun. It was funny. Uh, it was a great time. I low-key miss them, right, Ron? Might just start up, start it up again. Warren Kings. That's, yeah. I mean, that's, what were, that's what they were living like. They had three meals a day, all for free. I mean, some of the brothers were like, uh, <coughs> I think I'm sick too. I'm get those oh, I'm okay to stay there. Come on, Sean. But it, 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 was, it, was so, it was such a joy just building that friendship. Such a joy building that friendship. Could I, could I have, like, you know, rested in those two, three hours? I out, chilled and hung out with my wife and pleased myself or took a, a, you know, indulged in my own selfish pleasures. Of course, but I had to lay my life down. I had to love them humbly and it was so fruitful. They stayed faithful. They stayed joyful, but it's during these times that you can still be doing that with your Bible talk. Technically we're all in quarantine, you know, having, having a call, a daily call, a weekly call, just checking up on your brothers and sisters. So the second point, the challenge, who are you helping in your ministry? I'm just saying, guys, during these times, we have a lot of free time. And don't let Satan creep in your mind thinking that it's impossible to be fruitful during these times. It's impossible to share your faith. It's impossible to meet someone new. Don't let, don't let Satan creep in your heart like that. You gotta be faithful that there are people out there that are desperate, thirsty for the word of God. Don't focus on the people that, don't want a relationship with God, go out and find those people that have been praying every single night to get closer to God. Those oh are the God. people that God is interested. We got to do it for the vine. Oh. Jesus didn't die for nothing. He wasn't on the cross so that we can stay on the couch. We have one purpose, but two oh. options. Come on, Sean. Be fruitful or be burned, but don't just be fruitful. Be a friend. Make a friendship that lasts. And if we obey Jesus in this love, not only will we receive eternal life, but fruitfulness will be a byproduct. Don't waste your time on things like TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Come Don't on, just bro. Indulge in bettering yourself. Indulge in building up the kingdom and not burning so that many people uh, come, come on. on. The world evangelized. I love you guys. Oh, let's go. That's go. Go. amazing. Fire. Fire. This is incredible. Gosh. 
Guys, let's hear it one more time for what yeah. is it? Yeah. What's up? Oh. Oh. Oh.